Welcome back to the 15th part in this series on this to-do list application and in this one we're going to carry on with building the backend API part and we need to build support in the API for a delete request. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Now the first thing that I need to sort of think about is what do we want to delete? So at the moment we've got this list of items in our to-do list and that that's really nice for being able to see all of the items and we can even add another item if we submit a put request using this form here or however we want to do it like we did in the front end but we don't have a way of sort of specifying a particular item that we want to delete already we need to be able to specify an API endpoint that is going to isolate just one specific to do item that we can then update or delete as required. Now usually what we do to do this is what's called a, a, a detail view. Uh, what we've done at the moment is called a list view which as it says just sort of list everything out and we really need the detail view to be able to sort of allow us to do these more uh, tailored operations I suppose, more specific to an individual item. So with that I'm just going to go back to the view and I'm actually going to define another view. So in this one we've got to do view. I'm actually going to re rename this to to do list view and I'm going to create another class to do the detail view. I'm just going to check what's broken because now I've probably broken something because I renamed the class. I'm just going to fix that quickly by going to URLs and using the new name, so where we define the URL. And I'm going to go back to the views and I'm going to define a uh, another uh, another class here and I'm going to call it similarly to the one above to do detail view and it's going to inherit from the same API view class that the one above does but instead of being a list of items here it's going to be a single one and that's actually going to be defined when we stick the ID of the item in the URL for example too. If we go to this URL at the moment uh, if our server's working, let me just fix that for a minute. Uh, in views, so I've just got a class that's not defined here properly. And I can't import either. So it's importing from to do URLs. I'll just fix that. So to do list view, got to make sure we rename everything. And now it looks like we should be working. And so if we go to this URL with to do for slash API for slash two, at the moment it still gives us the same list view because it matches the regular expression that we defined starting with to do API. Now that's okay if we want if we want a list, but we don't want a list if we've specified the ID. What I want is the specific item so that it is easier for us to be able to make a delete request because we know which item that we want to delete and we don't want to delete the whole list. So I'm going to define that URL to be able to render that specifically. So I'm just going to copy and sort of paste the one that we have already. The only difference is going to be here is that on the end I want to stick on a, a regular expression which is going to uh, allow us to pass the primary key from the URL. So I've defined PK here, this is actually going to be the, the name that is passed in uh, as an argument to the methods. Because it's a primary key I want to define it as only being an integer and it could be anything from 0 through 9 and it could be also more than 1 so plus is 1 or more and then I'm just going to sort of finish up with a slash. So that should be okay I think I'll probably leave it like that and I'm just going to change this to detail view which we're going to define in a minute and I'm also going to import to to do detail view and that should be it for the URLs and so I'm going to go back to the class and I really need to find these these methods as well at least the get the get method here so to do that when we go to the URL we're going to normally do a get request so I'm going to see a detail uh, a detail view of that to your object so if I do def get and it's going to take self request and a primary key this time as we specified in the URL and instead of uh, getting all objects all I want to do is I want to get a specific one. Now normally what we do is do to do equals to do 
dot objects dot get uh, and then it would be a specific pk equals pk, something like that. Now that would return the object from the database. But if it doesn't exist, then we should really handle that. And what we could do in Python is handle it using a try except, for example, uh, and then catch if if that object doesn't exist, and then we could raise an error. But what Django is actually able to give us is a little helper to be able to do that for us. So at the top, I'm going to import uh, a Django shortcut. So from Django shortcuts, import get object or 404. Now this is a really helpful method, I use it quite frequently and instead what we can do here is we can just say using that method get object or 404 we can pass the the class that we want to get the object from or the model in other words so to do and we can also pass primary key and what that's equal to so pk equals pk so that's very similar to what I wrote before except that if the object doesn't exist then it's going to handle it for us and raise the expected HTTP response. In this case, it's going to be a 404 if the object doesn't exist. I'm just going to pass that data to the serializer, which we've already got. So to do serializer, and I'm going to pass to do just the single object, and then what I should be able to do is return a response, and that's just going to be equal to serializer dot data. So very similar to how we've got sort of in the other APIs as well. So let's go and see if that works now. So we've defined the URL and the view, so this should work. Uh, but we still get a list, that's probably something to do with the URLs. So Django's probably looking in top to bottom order, and because this one matches, it's going to use the list view. Uh, so it's probably not even going to look at this because it's already found one that matches. It's sort of working on a first come, first serve basis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of end that off so that we have to go to, to do for slash API and we can't stick any garbled nonsense on the end of it, uh, which we could before. So dollar sign says end this regular expression. Don't don't match anything after that. And I might as well do the same just to be consistent for that API endpoint, just in case we wanted to find any others sort of afterwards and that's not going to interfere with each other. So now refreshing, we just get a single item, which is really good. So this is the get part of it, and you can see here we've got allowed methods, the only one we really care about at the moment is get, but I'm actually going to add a delete to that now. So going back to the view, we can see if I just do, uh, if I define delete, so this is going to be self, request, and primary key, much like the one above, because it's the same URL, so it's also going to accept a primary key. Because the detail view, it has that reference to a specific object. That's the key difference between the detail view and the list view. And what I want to do here is essentially use the same uh, method to get the object, which I quite like. So I'm going to do get object again, or 404, and it's going to be a to-do object, and it's going to again have the same primary key. All I need to do now, instead of uh, passing it to the serializer to serialize that response, I want to do it sort of as the request intended. I want to just delete the object out of the database. So I'm going to do to do dot delete. So this one doesn't actually have to return anything, uh, but it did succeed. And the HTTP code for that is a 204. So what I want to do is return response and the status is going to be uh, equal to status dot http uh, 204 and that is a no content so if it starts with a 2 it means it su succeeded but anything other than a 200 uh, might mean something other than just the standard success sort of option so let's go ahead and check that really quick so if I go back to here and let's see, so if I do the list view again, you can see all the items I've got. Let's say I want to delete number 14. So I can go to forward slash 14, and I don't know if you noticed earlier, but we've now got this delete button, uh, which wasn't there when our API didn't support the delete request. So what I can do is, hopefully, 
I just press delete, it says, are you sure? This is the nice part about the Django REST framework, it's all sort of built in. I'm gonna delete that. And now, as you can see, our server has sent a delete request. And hopefully, if we go back to the list view, so I'll get rid of the 14, then you can see that object no, no longer exists. So that's how you sort of break up your API endpoints into a list view and a detail view and add support for the delete functionality. In the next one, I think we're going to hook up our front end to be able to make that delete request.